Hello and welcome to the Dream Team Professor podcast. My name is Scott and in this episode we're going to be looking at the top players to target in game week 8 on Sun Dream Team. Now we'll start off with the fixtures from ffstuff.co.uk. This is the fixture ticker for all of the Premier League sides from game week 8 through to game week 10. Um, you can move the arrows about on the website to see how many fixtures each team has within this space of time. But from game week 8 until game week 10, we've got quite a mixture again of uh, fixture volume. So we've got some teams that are playing five fixtures in this time frame. So five fixtures in three game weeks. And that is United, Arsenal, Liverpool, Newcastle and West Ham. So that's made up of this single game week in game week 8. So just a single game week this week. We then have a big international break, a big boring international break to mull over our transfers. Um, and then after that, we have two double game weeks for these sides. So we have a Premier League and um, European double game week for some in game week nine. And then in game week 10, we have Premier League and Carabao Cup. So these sides are United, Arsenal, Liverpool, Newcastle and West Ham. Five fixtures from game week eight to game week 10. Then we've got some teams with four fixtures um, and now they're either in Europe or only in the Carabao Cup, but not both. So City, Villa, Chelsea, Brighton, Fulham, Everton, Burnley and Bournemouth. Probably just City, Villa, Chelsea and Brighton are the teams that would want to target out of that lot. Um, and then the teams with three fixtures, so just three fixtures in three game weeks. Spurs, Brentford, Wolves, Forest, Sheffield United and Luton. So the one that obviously sticks out there is Tottenham with just the three fixtures in three game weeks. And so while they do have a really good fixture that we're going to speak about this week, they don't really have as many fixtures as the other sides that have five and four. Now, for one-off fixtures... Spurs probably do have the best game week eight fixture. So in terms of game week eight fixtures, Spurs are away to Luton. I think Liverpool have a pretty good fixture as well this game week. So, I mean, before the season started or at the start of the season, Brighton away did look like a really hard fixture. And it still is a really hard fixture. But at the moment, they're conceding a lot of goals and Liverpool are really good going forward. So I think that Liverpool fixture versus Brighton looks like a good one to target for a one-off fixture. Um, Villa are away at Wolves, which Villa have been having a good season so far. So I think that one looks good on paper. Chelsea away at Burnley. And I've put a maybe on this one. United at home to Brentford. And that all just depends on... Uh, what you think of United's form at the minute. Brentford at home should be a good fixture, but United haven't been very good. Now, the reason why there's not too many sides um, or sides that we would normally target this game week under that list of one-off favourable fixtures is because Man City face Arsenal. So two big hitters head-to-head. -head. Um, it's going to be hard to sort of choose a player that's going to really dominate in that game or do really well in that game. If you've got players from these teams, you probably are still going to hold them. But I don't know if you'll be bringing in like a, a City defender or an Arsenal defender specifically for this one or even one of the attacking players. So that's why I've not put it on list um, list of one-off fixtures. Likewise, um, Newcastle, they're in good form at the minute and they're facing West Ham who are also in good form. So again, it's going to be do you want to pick a Bowen or a Ward Prowse versus Newcastle's really good defence, like a Trippier or a Burn or Cher? So another two good teams that are facing off against each other there in West Ham and um, Newcastle United. So for the one-off fixtures that I think are most favourable, probably Spurs Luton, Liverpool Brighton, Villa Wolves, Chelsea Burnley and United Brentford, if you do trust their form. And... On FF stuff, you can just highlight specific teams. And the teams that I'm going to speak about in this episode are Chelsea, United, Arsenal, Liverpool, Newcastle, Villa. Uh, I've ticked Chelsea, but I'm actually not going to spend time on Chelsea. Uh, Brighton, Tottenham Hotspur and West Ham. So these sides, I think still, I'm going to go through the ones that I think have better longer term fixtures. So Manchester City, while the Arsenal game is tough. Um, and their the fixture run's pretty tough as well. They are City. They're pretty much fixture-proof. They, you know, everyone knows how good City are. So they face Arsenal, Brighton, Young Boys and Manchester United. So, I mean, Arsenal, Brighton, Man United all on paper look like tough games. But you wouldn't be surprised if they went on to win all of those. 
Manchester United, so a really good next three fixtures in Brentford at home, Sheffield United at home and FC Copenhagen at home. And now this was leading into a game week nine that I like the look of for United defence uh, for a park the bus chip or booster. But their form has been so, so bad. So if you are targeting these Man United players, it's trusting that the fixtures will breed the form and it's not their current form because their form has just been so, so bad. Uh, but on paper, those first three look good. But then it goes in game week 10. It goes to a good double game week of Manchester City at home and Newcastle at home. So two fixtures that are pretty tough there. Um, Man United, I've uh, done Man United. Arsenal, the fixtures actually turn fairly nice after Man City. So Man City at home in game week eight. Then away to Chelsea and Sevilla. Um, Two tough away games. We didn't do very well against Lons in that last away game. But still, I do think we should be able to beat those sides. Sheffield United then at home in game week 10. Uh, which I've just managed to bag a ticket for, which I'm quite happy with. Um, and then away for the West Ham game in the Carabao Cup. So, Man City, tough game. Chelsea, Sevilla. It's a tough double game week, but Arsenal are a good side. Sheffield United at home and then West Ham away in the Cup. So, I think that's a decent run really for Arsenal players. Liverpool have a great fixture run, so Brighton away from home, Everton at home, Toulouse at home, Nottingham Forest at home, so three home games in a row, and then Bournemouth away in the Carabao Cup. So that looks like a really good run of fixtures for Liverpool, um, and I am tempted by their players. I've got Salah already, I'm going to be holding on to him, but Trent was back in action yesterday, so maybe he's back up for consideration. Um, yeah, really good run for Liverpool. Newcastle, likewise, their fixture run looks pretty good as well. So Newcastle face West Ham away from home, which is going to be a tough game this week in game week eight. But then that double game week in game week nine looks really, really good for how good Newcastle are at the minute. So Crystal Palace at home, Borussia Dortmund at home. Obviously picked up a draw against AC Milan. They've just beat PSG. They're looking really, really good in Europe. And Crystal Palace at home does look like a good fixture as well. So West Ham, Crystal Palace, Bournemouth. Uh, sorry, Borussia Dortmund, and then followed up with Wolves and Manchester United away from home. I think this looks like a really good run for Newcastle. Villa, also very good. Wolves at home, uh, sorry, Wolves away, West Ham at home, AZ Alkmaar away, and then Luton at home. No Carabao Cup fixture, so just the four for them, but that does look like a nice run. Brighton's run is looking tough, and they are out of form. I think a lot of people are going to be moving on to Stupinian this week because he's now injured. Uh, myself, I've, I got rid of Matoma, I think, a, a week ago or a couple of weeks ago. And I think people might start moving off of some Brighton players. So they've got Liverpool at home in the next game. City away after that. Ajax at home. So three really tough games in a row. And then Fulham at home. And they haven't looked that great in Europe either at the minute. So for me, Brighton, these four fixtures don't look the best. Um, and then Spurs, we mentioned it. So Spurs have a real lack of fixtures. But in game week eight, they probably have the best fixture in Luton away from home. Um, a lot of people are going to be targeting that one. And I think they're going to have some good captaincy picks as well with James Madison and Son. But we'll come on to them in the players to target. And then West Ham, I'll finish up with them. So Newcastle at home and Villa away. Two tough games, in my opinion. Um, Olympiacos. That's like, again, away from home, those away games are tough, but they have looked really good in Europe, West Ham. Got a really good European record. And then Everton at home, Arsenal at home. So really out of that run, Newcastle, Villa, Olympiacos, Everton, Arsenal. You'd probably only say that Everton game is one you target specifically. So tough run for West Ham. Right, on to the teams and the players to target then for game week eight. Now on the screen, I've got, um, firstly, I've got the fixture ticker for each side one by one. Just below that, that's from Sofa Score, and that's just the team's form at the minute. Uh, I think it's the higher the bar, um, the better they did against their expectation in that fixture. Um, and then just below it, I've got just their latest uh, lineup. So how they either lined up in Europe in midweek or in Tottenham's case in the Premier League. Um, so Tottenham, really good run uh, of form at the minute. So is that pretty much... Um, unbeaten apart from that Carabao Cup game against Fulham so doing really really well this season but just the three fixtures in the next three game weeks which is a little bit off-putting in my opinion but the two players that stand out Son and Madison 
have been very, very good this season. Um, and they've got really good points potential as well. So this Luton game looks really good. I think they're both captainable, um, both Son and Madison. Especially while Haaland's playing Arsenal, that's going to be a tough one. This might be one of the weeks where it pays off to go against him. Um, I'm thinking about it. I don't have Son or Madison, so I won't be going there. But if you do have them, I would seriously be considering captain them. Uh, obviously, it is a risk going against Haaland, but... I think there are times that you can do it. He hasn't been in the best of form and the Arsenal game is going to be quite tough. Um, so only other thing to consider, it is the early kickoff. Um, so never back the early kickoff. I don't know if you think that counts for this game against Luton, but we'll start with Son, 4.7 million. He's got six goals this season. Um, and the only thing about this Luton game is there is a possible argument that he does better against like more attacking sides of a high line. Um, and you can kind of see that in his hauls. So he's got 20 points against Burnley. And I know Burnley, you wouldn't think are that much of a high line side. But since they've got company, they did really try and take the game to Spurs and it backfired. So 20 points Son got against Burnley. 15 points against Arsenal and 10 points against Liverpool. So he's hit double figures three times already this season. Um, and I mean, if you had the armband on them for those, for those games, you'd have been buzzing with that. So... He can hit massive hauls, and I think it does make him a good captaincy option. It's maybe just whether or not you think he'll do well against a low block of Luton, but they haven't looked that great this season. Um, fourth highest striker in the game, and he's played a lot less games than everyone else as well. So I do think that Son is a very, very good pick, especially if you don't have other problems across your side or you're planning to use your chip and get five at the back, something like that. If you did just have the transfers free, and if I had the transfers free, I probably would bring in Son just as a one-off in game week eight. Um, and then Madison, 4.4 million. So only five points for this game week. Um, a little bit poor by his standards this season because he's just been so, so good uh, across the season. But again, he can hit big hauls again. So 10 points against Arsenal, 15 points against Burnley and 15 points against Bournemouth. And the thing about Madison, he's been absolutely smashing it on the bonus uh, scoring as well so bonus points he's got the second most bonus points on the game with 17 and um, so unlike Son I think with Son you're mostly relying on the shots on target the goals um, he hasn't even got any assists this season but with Madison he can get the goals he gets the assists he's on all the set pieces maybe apart from penalties um, and he can get bonus points as well um, so I do think that he probably has a higher f like floor than Son he probably has like a a better point a better like um, level of points for when he doesn't score or assist. But Son is explosive and he, as you can see, can get those hat tricks as I found out the hard way. So I think it's going to be a tough one between Son and Madison. Um, if I had no other fires to put out, I think I probably would go for Son in this one. But I think both are really good captaincy, uh, captaincy options. Then we're going to come on to Newcastle. Uh, really, really good week for Newcastle. They're on ridiculous form. So since they had that little run at the start, the really tough run, they beat Villa, but then they lost to City, Liverpool, Brighton. But since then, they've been unbeaten um, and keeping clean sheets as well. A bit like last season when they went on that run of keeping clean sheets. Uh, they couldn't quite make it six clean sheets in a row against PSG. Uh, just the five clean sheets in a row, which isn't bad at all. Um, but amazing effort against PSG with a 4-1 win. Really good performance. And Kieran Trippier is going to be the first person that I mentioned to target. Uh, so 5.5 million. We said all along that Brentford game was the turning point for the fixtures. And he's been brilliant ever since, to be honest. Uh, 21 points this game week and an assist in both games this game week. Rather fortunate, probably, with that um, first one earlier in the week, which was like a tackle assist. Uh, but... You're going to take that. 21 points this week is a very, very good performance. He's the fifth highest scoring player in the game now, up to 7.8 points per game. And he's got 14 bonus points as well. So it isn't just the clean sheets. He's getting the assists. Um, I can't remember how many he's on now. Trippier. Five assists for the season already. So really good performance from Kieran Trippier so far. And he's someone that I brought in for uh, 
Uh, well, I technically brought him in for Region. I did Region and Saka out for Trippier and Gordon. I'd say I more took Trippier. Uh, I'll put Trippier in for Saka just because of the price points. Um, and I've been very pleased with his points this week. So Trippier, I think, is a very, very good player to target. And the fixtures still look good really going on. So West Ham away from home. While it's a tough game, could still be a low-scoring game from both sides. Both sides have had Europe, tough European games. Um, and then Crystal Palace in game week nine at home. Crystal Palace aren't exactly free scoring. And Newcastle at home are just ridiculous. The atmosphere. Uh, and then Brussie Dortmund at home as well. I think Brussie Dortmund are going to be looking at that fixture and thinking we don't want it, to be fair. So PSG and AC Milan have had tough games already against them. I think that's a really good double game week. Wolves away and then Man United away in game week 10. So I think he's a very, very good pick and the fixtures still look good. And I still think there's a strong argument to be had for a defensive double up. Um, Shaw, Byrne, both doing really well this week. So Fabian Scher at 4.1 million got 16 points and Byrne at 3.8 million got 15 points. And both scored against PSG as well. So Fabian Scher got his first goal of the season. Uh, is it fortunate? I don't know. He was he pulled he pulled the trigger on a long range shot, kind of slipped over in the process, but what a goal! Um, and then Dan Byrne, second goal of the season for him, fifteen points this game week. So both are looking really good. You got Lascelles um, at one point six million, could be a really good bargain straight back in the defence if you're trying to solve a last minute problem or you just don't have budget or whatever he might be good for just the one fixture maybe two at a push but Botman is I think due back at some point after the international break so while it looks like you've got game week eight and game week nine there is a big gap in between the two because of that international break where Botman maybe could come back so I think at the minute strong case for either Fabian Scher or Dan Byrne out of the two I was liking Fabian Share the most um, at the start of the season as like a second pairing with Trippier um, but there's quite a little what well, we've got like 0.4 um, sorry 0.4 point three in between the two of them so I think I'd probably just go for the cheaper one in Dan Byrne at the moment and then Al Moron 3.1 million so nine points in the first game this game week and then 12 points in the second game a goal in both uh, Anthony Gordon did pick up that uh, the fifth yellow card in the Premier League um, and is now suspended. So if you have got Gordon, maybe you can just move to Almoron at 3.1. That's an easy move if you did want to keep a Newcastle midfielder in your team. So two goals in two games for Almoron. That was his third game, uh, goal of the season. He does look good. I think there are probably a few rotation options that might take some minutes off him, but... You could catch him while he's in form. Gordon, he's a liability, isn't he? I'm going to probably hold on to him this week and hope he does all right against Crystal Palace and Borussia Dortmund. But uh, Isak, 3.8 million. So he feels like a good price while Wilson is injured. And he was left out of the England squad. So maybe that's an indicator that he might not be back um, sooner rather than later. Or maybe it's just a precaution. But while Wilson is left out of the squad... I do think Isak is a decent player to target. Five goals and one assist for the season. 6.4 average points. Um, but 3.8, maybe you could try and get to an Ollie Watkins or a Darwin Nunes if you're feeling brave. So I think he's a good option, but I think there are quite a few good options around that price. And then on to Man City then. So this game week eight one is a tough one when this comes up. So when you get sort of two top popular sides playing against each other. It never is that great for fantasy football, but Man City have Arsenal in game week eight at the Emirates. They then face Brighton in game week nine. Young Boys also in game week nine for that double game week. And then in game week 10, obviously they don't have the Carabao Cup because they were knocked out by the mighty Newcastle, um, but they do have Manchester United away from home. So I wouldn't specifically be looking to bring anyone in for this City Arsenal game, unless you're missing someone obvious out of your team already, unless you don't have a Haaland or you don't, you don't have an Alvarez. I still think Alvarez is probably a good pick. He's done really, really well this week um, or this season. Unless there's someone glaring that you are missing from Manchester City, I probably wouldn't be looking to target anyone specifically for it. 
maybe game week nine while Brighton are looking a bit shaky at the back. But yeah, I, I think you probably just hold what you have for this one. And also with Pep, with Arteta, I think this game week eight one has got a little bit of potential to throw a few surprises or tactical surprises like Bernardo Silva, for example, has been deployed at left back a few times when playing against Arsenal. Give Saka a kick in in those ones. Maybe not with Ake and Gavardio now, but a lot of mind games go on. I think we might see Arsenal play both Party and Rice, even though Party's been out for a little while. It's just, it's always just something strange that goes on a little bit when these two face off against each other. A bit like when Pep used to play against Bielsa. He always used to talk him up and then try and do something weird. Um, yeah, I would mm, just take this game with a pinch of salt a little bit. But I'll go with Alvarez at 4.5 million at first. So he's taken Haaland, overtaken Haaland for overall points now. Uh, he's got six goals in six, uh, sorry, six goals and six assists from 10 games. He's 25% owned at the moment in the game. So fairly highly owned for a, for a striker at City that's not Haaland. 8.5 points per game and 20 points for the game week. He's been absolutely brilliant. And he didn't he didn't start... Well, he played that Wolves game. He started the Wolves game and scored direct from a free kick when he's been looking really good from set pieces, corners, free kicks, all the sort of crossing opportunities. He's looked really, really good. And then Leipzig, it was disappointing that he didn't start that game. But then he came off the bench and got a goal and an assist. So... He is looking on fire at the minute, and I would even if it is Arsenal, I wouldn't be that against bringing him in. It's just for this one week, if you haven't got that many problems, you could go for Son instead. Um, I think it's point two more. So that's just one thing to consider. Is it the best week for it? Um, Phil Foden at four point five. He's the eighth highest scoring mid. Um, he's now only five points behind Eze, who is now injured. Um, but we've been saying how good Eze has been doing, but Foden has sort of caught him up now. That's playing a twice a week and that sort of thing uh, does add up. Uh, a slow start to the season, but in the last two weeks, he's been pretty good. He's hit um, double figures, 11 points against RB Leipzig, and a bit earlier in the season, he got 12 points against Forest. So he can hit these big numbers, and he's got 11 bonus points in total now for the season, so he's picking up bonus as well. Um, Doku, 3.6 million. I thought he might not look as good of an option now that um, Greedish is back on the scene, but Greedish has taken a little bit of time to come back from this injury. Uh, Bernardo's back um, as well, started on that right-hand side against RB Leipzig. But Doku, a bit like Alvarez, started on the bench against Leipzig, came on, grabbed a goal, grabbed an assist. Um, I think they might, both scored and assisted each other in that one. Um, and he's just such a cool finisher as well, very composed of that left-hand side. So two goals and one assist for him at the minute. Again, probably wouldn't bring him in for this Arsenal game. But he does look like he's probably going to get one start and one opportunity off the bench in these double game weeks. And he has been quite impressive at 3.6 million. Um, just a few more notes. Rodri suspended for that Arsenal game. Stones and Bernardo Silva are now back in the squad. Bernardo Silva started, um, but Stones I don't think has played yet. Um, but these are going to offer more rotation now for City. Um, Silva in those midfield positions and on the wings. And then Stones, will is he going to rotate with the centre-backs like Diaz, Vardiol, Ake, Akanji? Or is he going to rotate with Walker, who's been pretty um, free of rotation so far on that right-hand side? They've got a lot of centre-backs now, so I'm a little bit worried it might be Walker, the guy that rotates with Stones eventually. But yeah, it's a tough one. It's going to be harder to choose these City players, but for this game week, I'm not going to be looking myself at getting City players in. Last question is, will you be captain in Erling Haaland? Um, not a great week for him. Not f not great few games for him by his standards. Erling Haaland, this game week, just the seven points. Four points against Leipzig. Three points against Wolves. I did not play against Newcastle. Um, and then got eight points back at Forest. Eight points at Forest. Um, seven points in that Champions League game. 13 points against... West Ham United, so not hitting the massive, massive numbers. He did get that 23 points against Fulham. We know he's got it in him. But will you be captain in Haaland this game week? Or for this one-off, 
one off game week eight will you be captaining someone else let us know in the comments below who's going to be your captain this week um, on to Arsenal who are obviously playing City so City have four fixtures in this run Arsenal have five with that Carabao Cup we have City Chelsea away Sevilla away Sheffield United at home and then West Ham away um, actually I said I've got Sheffield United tickets I've got Sevilla tickets as well so I'm, I'm going to be at a back-to-back -back game week nine and game week ten so maybe I should load up on these Arsenal players um, latest on Saka Saka's been the big talking point lately with this injury that he's had um, or not had he just keeps seeming like he gets injured and then just keeps bouncing back I took him out last game week um, not solely because of the injury because mostly because I wanted Trippier um, but he has looked a bit worrying with this injury or fake injury Arteta said he hadn't trained but then he still went on and played the Premier League game probably could have been a, ha had a hat trick if he didn't give away two penalties to other other teammates very generous of him uh, but then came back he, he played the whole game um, I think he did come off late in that first Premier League game but I was expecting him to go off a bit earlier but he didn't and then he started the Lons game as well which was a big surprise um, it's got Arsenal fans arguing with each other whether or not he should have played that one but he played it and he went off in the first half with an injury but he still picked up an assist in that one he's doing really well I suspect that if there's any chance that he plays in that City game, even if he's at 70%, um, I think they will be played and he will be risked. And he has been called up for the England uh, squad as well. I think Southgate said he's being assessed ahead of City, but he's called him up anyway. So maybe he thinks there's a bit of a positive um, vibe around it. So... I think Arsenal are going to risk him. I think Arsenal are going to play him against City. Uh, he's at 42% ownership, but so he's dropped from around 50% ownership. But I still think he's a really very popular pick, even for this City game. Uh, but maybe he won't have pens. You might have thought that for the City game, if he gets a pen, he could take it. But now there's a chance that he does give it away to Erdegaard. Um, or Erdegaard gives it away to Havertz for a little confidence booster. Or I don't know, who else needs a goal? Um, could give it to Jesus as well. Who knows? But... He might not be on pens for sure. Gabriel Jesus, five, mini, uh, five million, or Gabriel Jesus, five million. Still feels quite expensive at five million when you look at look at Son at 4.7. You look at Alvarez, I think he's 4.5. Um, Isak under four, so does feel expensive still, but does look back to full fitness, does look capable of playing two games a week. And I think he looks quite impressive. The only downside is that with these injuries that we've got in the minute, Martinelli and well Trossard played the Lons game but Martinelli and Trossard were out together at some point Jesus was having to play off the left Eddie was playing through the middle Jesus can play on the right when Saka's not available so I do think he's a bit of a utility man now he can play either side but playing through the middle is where he looks best grabbed the goal against Lons um, I think he got an assist against um Bournemouth I think it was or and three bonus points against Bournemouth so 15 points for the game week I do think he looks really impressive and I think he's a big differential at the minute Gabriel Jesus um, if you fancied him to go after his old club in City he is come on where's his ownership Gabriel Jesus Jesus 2.2 percent selected so a big big differential uh, probably don't fancy him for the City game, but I do think he's going to get a good amount of points from game week nine onwards. Uh, Saka, obviously we just spent the whole intro of this slide talking about him. 6.4 million. Still managed an assist for Gabriel Jesus before going off in that Lons game. Uh, five goals and five assists so far this season. So he is smashing it. Um, and I'll tell you, not having him is scary. Uh, feel a bit less scared in this Man City game. But there is a potential if you did have him and you're a bit worried about his injury for City maybe you could move to Madison I do expect Madison would probably score higher than Saka this game week or if you don't have three strikers already I think I still would go to Son personally um, and then you've got the opportunity to captain them as well so I think he will start but if you are getting a bit shaky on him I'd probably go Madison or Son Defensively, I probably wouldn't target any Arsenal players defensively for the City game. I think that's a bit bonkers. But if you have got Arsenal players already, Saliba, Ben White, um, you 
probably okay just to hold on to them because I think their fixtures do look okay after City, Chelsea, Sevilla, Sheffield United, West Ham. There was that wobble against Lons, but they were well up for it. I think it was more of a case of just Lons were pretty good, to be fair. I think it might have caught us off guard a little bit. Um, but defensively, we have been fairly good this season. So I don't think Chelsea, Sevilla are bad fixtures. Sheffield United looks okay. And I think there is the chance that Saliba and Ben White could get that West Ham game. Uh, ben White's been good uh, recently. He did get dropped for the Lons game, but I think that's just where he's played so many games recently. One goal, one assist for him so far. Um, and then Saliba, he's the more popular pick, he's the cheaper pick. Probably does just top out on clean sheet points and the odd bonus. He doesn't really get much else, but twice a week defender. Um, you haven't got to worry about what rotation so much of him. So good option with Saliba as well. Liverpool, 6.7 million. Salah is the best pick from Liverpool, in my opinion. Um, but the fixtures look good. So Brighton, Everton, Toulouse, Forest, Bournemouth all look really good. They've got that run of three home games in a row. Everton, Toulouse and Forest. He did start this Europa League game. Um, which was probably quite a surprise. They started with Jota, Nunes, Salah, but they took off Nunes and Salah early on in this game, probably because they have Jota missing through suspension for the Premier League game. Um, and who else? Gakpo is injured. So probably just keeping those players um, wrapped up, ready for the Premier League game against Brighton. And I think that Brighton one is a really good one to target, to be fair, the way they're playing at the minute. Uh, Stupinian out, so he's going to be replaced by Lamptey now. But defensively, they look terrible, and we know Liverpool look good going forward. So I think Salah is a really good option this week. Just the six points for him this game week, I feel like I feel a little bit hard done by about that. So obviously robbed of the assist by VAR, and the audio came out. If you if you haven't seen it already, I'm sure you have. But if you haven't listened to the audio of that VAR decision, that's absolutely brilliant. Um, <laughs> absolute shambles and then I feel like Salah was probably robbed again by Darwin Nunes' poor finishing in Europa League he's got the big chance created in this game in Europa League literally just put a ball straight across the floor straight across the box Darwin just had to just hit the target and he just put it wide I, I've seen him do it so many times this season Salah could have had an assist for him but he just can't get his boots on the right feet so hard done by a little bit with just the six points and he's probably going to get a price decrease now as well but Salah I think is going to be my captain for game week eight against Brighton I'm putting it out there now so I think he's a really good captaincy option especially if you if you can't get to Son or you can't get to Madison um, or you don't want to use the transfers just to do it for the one game week I think Salah's a good pick and I think he's going to be my pick Trent is back um, came off the bench in that last game against Spurs and then he started against Union St. Juar in midweek. 5.4 million. He got 12 points in the Europa League. So I'm not sure what to expect in terms of price rises. I've not been very good at predicting these so far this season, but I don't think he got anything against... Let's see what he got against Spurs. One point against Spurs for playing 16 minutes. And then 12 points against Union St. Juar in the Europa League. So 13 points for the game week. 12 points in the most recent game. Do you reckon he'll get a price increase or not? He's someone that I'm interested in at 5.4 for this part of the bus in game week 9. Can't really afford to do it yet. Got an assist in this game, right? So had a long range shot. Straight down the middle. Straight into the keeper. The keeper spilled it. And I think it was that Graven Birch just tapped it in. And Trent's got the assist for it. I, I don't know how I feel about that. But he got one bonus point, one shot on target, three tackles. Two points for playing just over 60 minutes. One assist and five points for the clean sheet. So 12 bonus points. Will it be enough to get a price rise for him? Um, I don't think he's going to be playing in Europe every week. I think this was just get, giving him minutes ahead of that Brighton game, to be honest, because he is coming back from injury. But I am definitely still interested because he can just hit double figures in one game or 60 minutes, double figures in 60 minutes. So I think that I'm probably going to still get him in my team ahead of game week nine or four game week nine for that Everton home game and to lose home game and hope for the best. 
few other bits just to mention. Allison did play in goal in this Europa League game, but Kelleher was injured. Um, Jota started it, but Jota's out for the Premier League game, so that's probably why he started it. Um, Nunes and Salah obviously started, but went off early, so a bit of team news for that Liverpool game. Before we go on to Manchester United, if you're enjoying the video so far, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel for all the latest Sun Dream Team content. And if you're listening on Spotify or any other podcast platforms, do give us a follow or a like on there as well. And also, if you're after more Sun Dream Team content, check out the Dream Team Tonic podcast. Uh, we have a weekly episode that goes out live to our patrons where we interact in the chat with them. And our patrons also get a load of great other features, um, including exclusive articles. And Ben has written a fixture ease article for October to help you with your October planning. So that's available for Patreon members. Um, if you're not a Patreon member at the minute, and you want to have a look, link is in the description below. Or with the YouTube episodes, you can wait a little bit later on in the week. And they do go free to everyone eventually. Um, so check that out. Link in the description below. Man United. Leave a like on the video if you think Man United have been terrible so far this season. I sure do. So I'm going to like my own video here. Uh, but Man United. So Brentford at home in the next game. It's got to be a must win, hasn't it? They've just lost against Crystal Palace. They've just lost against Galatasaray. They need to turn it around. It looked like they were on the way up with that win against Burnley and the win against Crystal Palace in the league after losing three in a row. But back to square one again. Losing against Palace at home. Losing against Galatasaray at home. They have been. They've looked shambles, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, it's not looking good. The fixtures look okay. Brentford, Sheffield United, FC Copenhagen. Those three fixtures look like they should be good on paper. Then game week 10 goes to City, Newcastle. But let's stick with these three fixtures first because one game at a time. But you look at these and you think they should be winning them. But if you, if you think they are going to win these fixtures at the minute, you are banking fully on fixtures over form because the form has been... Pretty terrible. And this is the predicament I'm having at the minute. So, Delo, 3.1 million. He's the player that I'd be the most tempted with at the minute. 3.1 million. He's an attacking fullback. He's nailed with all the injuries they've got at the minute. So, he probably is going to play twice a week. But they're just conceding too many goals. They're not looking like keeping clean sheets. So... Are you just dreaming? Are you just hoping that he's going to do well rather than going off the actual data and the form? Um, and this is the problem I'm having at the minute. I'm looking at Dallow and I'm looking at Dan Byrne um, at the minute for my own team. And I'm just looking at it thinking, well, if I, Dallow's exciting, he plays twice a week. He could score, he could assist, he could get attacking returns. But he's not really. And they're not really very good in defence. He did do well against Crystal Palace's like B side in the Carabao Cup, but yeah, it's it's, it's it's a tough one for me. Whereas like Newcastle actually look defensively solid, they look a good team. They've got most of their back line available. It's predictable lineup. Whereas with Man United, they've got Shaw Shaw out, Malassia out, Reggie on out. They've got Lindelof, Rand starting, Maguire and Evans as the other options. Wambasaka's out. Onana's getting four point eight ratings in in the Champions League. So yeah, it's do you believe in their fixtures is the, the thing when you go with Man United and I'm losing belief a little bit here. Um let me know what you think of Man United at the minute in the comments. Keep it clean. Uh Haaland though, the bright spark for Man United, three point seven million. Two really well taken goals against Galatasaray. Yeah, the only real bright spark. That's his third goal of the season, and he does look impressive, to be honest, so far. So I would still fancy him to score goals in this run of Brentford, Sheffield United, FC Copenhagen. I don't think that's the problem. I think the problem is defensively. Um, and just quickly circling back to Dallow as well, because I'm interested in him for this game week nine. Um, potential part of the bus. And... Casemiro's been sent off in this Champions League game as well. So, obviously, Brentford at home might be okay. Brentford aren't the best at the minute. 
Sheffield United in the Premier League looks good. That's a good fixture away from home. But in that Copenhagen game, Casemiro is going to be suspended for it. The defence already looks shaky. Um, they played a midfield three of Mount, Casemiro and uh, Hannibal, I think that is. But like, if they're lining up with, I don't know, I don't even know if McTominay is available, but Mount, McTominay and Hannibal, that's not filling me with, filling me with much confidence ahead of Copenhagen, for example, who still managed to score against Bayern. So, yeah, I, I am worried about their defence. Um, but Holland looks good. He got the uh, the two goals in midweek. Bruno Fernandes, another disappointing one. He's just doing enough to sort of make me justify maybe hanging on to him a little bit more. But overall, he's been disappointing. He's dropped from 6.5 to 5.9. I think it probably would be mad to bring him in currently, but I think if you have got him, he probably is worth holding, probably until game week 10 when they face City, and then that's when I'm looking to maybe move him out and try and get Saka back in. Six points per game so far, while not at his best. If he does start hitting assists and goals and picking up a bit of form, um, he can't easily hit double figures, I think, but it's just whether or not you think he will do. And then Rashford, I'm just going to mention him. I wouldn't hesitate to move on Rashford at this point. Uh, with the likes of Son, Alvarez, Watkins, all on very good form. Arguably even Haaland. I don't think I'd make a sideways move with Man United at the minute. But yeah, I wouldn't hesitate to move Rashford out at this moment. Aston Villa, um, last minute winner yesterday in the Europa League. They face Wolves in game week eight away from home. They've got a double of West Ham and AZ Alkmaar, followed by game week 10, single game week of Luton, which obviously looks like a good game to target as well. So Watkins got 26 points for his hat-trick and two assists, which actually obviously is a really good score. But if you compare that to what he probably would have got last season for the same thing, um, probably would have ended up with more points with the star man and all that. Only one point in midweek. I think he played 45, I think it was, um, in the Europa League uh, conference. But I do like the look of him for this run. Um, obviously, confidence is high. Wolves is an okay fixture. West Ham at home looks okay. AZ Alkmaar and then Luton looks brilliant. So I think Watkins at 4.1 will start to creep into a few more teams now. Matty Cash at 3 million. He has been disappointing where he's not starting these European games, but then he comes on and looks so good. He only played the 45 minutes in Europe off the bench. I think he came on for Digne. Um But he got two points for an assist. Would have been free, but he picked up the yellow card in that game as well for going to head-to-head -to -head with uh, one of the players. Nine points against Brighton earlier in the week, so he got a bonus point and an assist. So back-to-back -back assists. Six tackles in that Brighton game as well. He just looks so, so attacking. Like, even though yesterday he, he did end up with the assist, um, he was in the box so much, causing trouble. I really do like him as a pick. The only downside is I probably don't fancy him to start the AZ Alkmaar game again. Um, he'll play West Ham at home, but then he'll probably just get an appearance off the bench again in midweek. So that is the slight drawback to him, that there's no double... Game week starts looking likely at the minute, but he does look so, so good. So explosive going forward. Konza looks like the safer option at Villa. So for starts, he looks safer to start. 2.7 million, and he picked up 10 points in midweek. Two points against Brighton, um, but then the clean sheet points and bonus, I think, in the midweek game. And he just looks the opposite of Cash. So Cash looks like he's going to play one game a week with one appearance and be explosive. Whereas Konza just sort of ticks along. He gets the clean sheet points. He does really well for bonus. He's got 13 bonus points, uh, which is the most of any Villa player. Matty Cash, for example, has got four. Um, so not much attacking upside, but he's hitting tackles. He's hitting bonus, and he's a bit of a safer pick. So, yeah, deciding between the two, it's whether you want the explosive one that sort of plays one and a half games, or you go for the Slightly less explosive, but he's hitting bonus and he could start both. It's a tough one. They're all around similar points. So Cash is on 53, Consul's on 44, and Digne's on 41. So quite close there. Cash has probably just edged it where he has got more attacking returns. Martinez at 3.2. 
kept the clean sheet in Europe. He's playing twice a week, so a really good option for playing twice a week. But he's still quite far behind in the overall points for, um, well, just points. Um, and there's a few cheaper keepers ahead of him as well. Not that are playing twice a week, but there's cheaper keepers that are just playing one fixture and they end up with more points at the minute. So does look very appealing, but it's just whether or not you want to use a transfer sorting your keeper out at this time. But I do think this run does look good for them. On to West Ham. Fixtures do start to get a bit tougher now for West Ham. Newcastle at home. Villa away. Olympiacos away. Everton at home. And Arsenal at home in the Carabao Cup. So, do get a little bit tougher. But they are looking really, really good. The midfield and attacking options um, are looking strong. So, I'm going to just go with the two players to target. And also, look at the fixtures on the screen if you're on YouTube. Like, not the fixtures, sorry, the results. Like, so many good performances from West Ham. Uh, the loss against City and the loss against Liverpool. But other than that, they've done really, really well. Bowen, 4.6 million. He's on 17 points this game week. Five goals, two assists, another assist last night. Goal against Sheffield United in the game before that. And I think Antonio was out injured for this one. So Bowen started up top. Um, so you might end up with an out of position Bowen if you did bring him in shortly. Um, called up for the England side as well. So in the England squad might be a bit of a confidence boost for him. And he is playing twice a week now. Um, he didn't play the last European game, but that was due to illness apparently. And Bowen went on to play this one. The only thing I would consider, they are doing quite well in Europe. Um, so maybe by the last couple of fixtures, if they're already qualified, they may not need to go full strength. But at the moment, it looks like Bowen's going to play twice a week. And he's the fifth highest scoring midfielder in the game. So a very, very good option and could be playing striker potentially. James Wall Prowse, another one, top player, playing twice a week. Started both of these European fixtures and he's grabbed another assist in this game in midweek. 16 points for the game week, so 17 for Bowen, 16 for James Wall Prowse. He's 4.1 million. Two goals, six assists so far. Um, just ridiculous attacking returns in a minute. And even when he's not getting attacking returns, he's still picking up points for bonus. And all the other bits. And I just had a little look. I brought him up on the bottom of the screen if you're watching on YouTube. But he's um, second out of all the midfielders for big chances created. That's with six. He's first out of everyone, all positions, for accurate crosses. He's 91% pass completion, which just feels ridiculous for me. That's a re he's, he's getting... Like, really good bonus points just for the passing. So he's already starting with a great starting point. 91% pass completion. Or sorry, 90% pass completion. But yeah, that's that's ridiculous. Um, and then seventh out of all the midfielders for interceptions. So he's doing well across a number of these. Um, I can't remember what you call them now. But the things that get you the tier points to get you the bonus. He's doing well in multiple um, different aspects of it. So that's what's making him so likely to get these bonus points. Um, he's a really, really good pick at the minute. Then on to Brighton. So they're quite low down my list um, at the minute with their little blip here. So lost against Chelsea, lost against Villa, drew against Marseille. No wins in their last three. Um, obviously lost against Athens in the last game in Europe as well. So not great. Having a little bit of a wobble perhaps. Um so no wins in the last three. Defensively, they look a mess. No clean sheets at all this season. And now the the bright spark at the back, Stupinian, who looked like he was playing a striker at times from uh, right back or left back, right back. Um, anyway, left uh, left back. Um, Stupinian, um, he's now out injured. Um, so Lamptey is now in the mix. Um, I haven't actually put Lamptey down as a player to target because I just think their defence are that bad. And also Lamptey has his own injury problems or history of injury problems. He's at 2 million now. Um, he's done all right. He got two assists in that Man United game, I think it was. But I wouldn't go there, to be honest, with his injury record as well. We don't have much proof that he can play twice a week reliably. And then their fixtures look tough. So Liverpool at home. 
City away, Ajax at home. I think they're three really bad fixtures when you're not in form. And then Fulham at home as well in game week 10, single game week. So I don't think it's great. The Estupinian injury via PremierLeagueInjuries.com, the latest was two days ago. He's injured. He can't play for a long time. One month, more or less. I don't know the right time, but it's a muscular injury and it's not for a game or two. That was by De Zerbi. Um PremierLinkInjuries.com, that's the probably the best place to check out the latest injury news. So Estopinion is out and probably a lot of people will be replacing him this week. Uh, Matoma, 3.8 million, got an assist in this last game. He's up to three goals, four assists. And Brighton do still look good going forward. It's just the defence. So if you still want to have one of the attacking players, I think Bro um, Matoma probably is still the best one. Uh, Pascal Gross is back from injury um, earlier than anticipated and he was back with his third goal of the season. But it wasn't enough to get him the win. João Pedro scored from the penalty spot. And he's been a joke, really. 2.6 million. Put him in at the start because I thought he was a good option. But it was soon to become apparent that they would change their striker like uh, every single game. Uh, sub the strikers at half time. And it's frustrating, but he's actually done quite well. So 2.6 million. I'm not going to be targeting him because it is just too frustrating for me but he now finds himself as the fifth highest scoring striker tied on points with Son and with more points than Watkins I think he's scored a lot of penalties but they all count and most of his appearances have been off the bench as well but Pedro for Brighton is somehow in the top five strikers on the game Right, on to my team update then, and I, f I found this, uh, well, I'm going to do my team update and my transfer plans now, and I found this a very hard game week to do my transfers, um, but team update, so 120 points for the game week, 690 points in total, and that's boosted me up from about 7k to 5k now, uh, 5,069th, so Almost in the top 5k. Um, I've got 7 points for Sanchez. Minus 1 for Stupinian. And actually, you'll take that considering how bad they've been this week. Um, Saliba, 9 points. Cash, 11 points. Trippier with 21 points. Bruno, 9. Anthony Gordon, 9. And a suspension. And Foden, 15 points. Up top, we've got Julian Alvarez smacking 20 points in. Salah with six and my captain Haaland with just the 14. So a couple of options or quite a few options there would, that would have done better than Haaland as the captain. But hey ho. So what issues do I have at the minute? A stupid Jan injured. Definitely out. So he's got to go. Gordon will miss the next game in game week eight. But then Newcastle fixtures are okay. Nine points. I'm not actually that bothered about that. I think that's a decent return from this week. It is just that suspension in game week eight. But I think I need. I think I'm going to just keep hold of him because there's other things that I want to sort out. To be honest, and it is that game week nine part of the bus chip that I'm still thinking about, or booster that I'm thinking about. Um, Stupid end is going to be replaced, but it's what I do with the other the other transfer. So. Trippier, happy to keep. Matty Cash is only getting sort of 1.5 games in the in the double game weeks, but I think I'm still okay to keep hold of him because he can score, he can assist, he gets in these um, good attacking positions, so I think he's got high upside. Saliba, I'm kind of on the fence. Um, he doesn't have a very high ceiling where he's just picking up a bonus point and clean sheet point at best. He's not really getting attacking returns. But is he that much of an issue, really? The double game week does look... Well, the fixtures look okay. Man City, obviously, but then Chelsea, Sevilla in game week 9. They're not terrible. And in game week 10, from game week 10 onwards, I think you're going to want Arsenal defenders anyway. Uh, Sheffield United and West Ham. So I think the fixtures look okay after that. So he's not a massive concern. So I think, really, I am going to be looking at planning longer term for, for game week 9. I don't think there's that much that... I'm going to be targeting specifically in this game week eight single game week. Um, if I do go for like a Son, I'm going to have to lose an Alvarez, Salah or Haaland, which I don't really want to do at this at point. At this point, I could get Madison in for a Bruno. 
a Foden perhaps. But then I still think that Brentford game isn't the worst fixture for Manchester United. And then their double does still look okay. And I think I would still like to keep Bruno for that double game week. Um, They're in a desperate situation and they need someone to drag them out and it could be Bruno. So let's go on to my plans then. Uh, So game week eight plans might surprise you. Um, Obviously Sanchez, I've been pretty happy with Sanchez in goal. But I want Trent. I want Trent for game week nine. I I can't get to it at the minute, so I had a little look. Um, He's got the two home games. He might only just start one against Everton and then come off the bench maybe in Toulouse, worst case. But we've just seen he can hit 12 points in 60-odd minutes. And if he does end up getting two, that's going to be delicious. I need Trent in this game week nine part of the bus regardless, I think. So I can't get him in yet. I tried it out, Estepinion out, and Alvarez out would give me the opportunity to go Trent and a 2.5 million, but there's not really any 2.5 millions that I would want long term. Um, so that doesn't really work. So then I looked at maybe doing a stupid yan out and then downgrading Sanchez in goal to Johnston. Now it's a sideways move, but it saves me 0.9 million, which could come in handy when upgrading um, elsewhere. And Johnston's fixtures look okay going forward, whereas um, Chelsea's fixtures do get a little bit tougher. Um, Obviously, it's not a bad fixture at the moment. I think it's Burnley next. But after that, Arsenal, Brentford, Blackburn. But then Spurs, City, Newcastle, Brighton, Man United look horrible. So going Johnston, saving me a bit of cash um, and then using that elsewhere and Johnson having better fixtures and Henderson being out looks okay so I think I'm going to do that and save myself 0.9 a bit of a boring move and then I think I'm going to look to upgrade Estepinion to Big Dan Burn um, now I'm considering so Trippier Cash Saliba I'm relatively happy with them Trippier absolutely brilliant high upside double game weeks brilliant Cash high upside probably 1.5 Five games, a game and an appearance off the bench. If he gets two in that double game week, I've been really lucky. Um, but he does look like a good pick. So I'm happy with him. Two high upside players. Saliba, moderately happy with. So Arsenal's defence is okay. They control games. Could get clean sheets. The fixtures are all right. Um, but Saliba is going to play twice a week. So there is a chance that he probably gets a clean sheet, a bonus point, And maybe finishes on seven or eight points tops. Um, but if he does that twice and you double it, it's not the end of the world. So I don't think it's a massive fire to put out with Saliba. I'm happy to have him in my part of the bus, potentially. Um, wasn't part of the plan initially, but I think I'm happy with it. Now, the other slot will be Trent. And I mentioned him high upside. Like, we don't have to go into him. Um, might not start two games, but I think he's a really, really good pick. So that is Trippier, Cash, Saliba and Trent. And the other position now, I'd like to choose between... Walker, Dallow, and Dan Byrne. Now, Kyle Walker has been pretty safe so far this season. Should be nailed. He's been playing twice a week on most opportunities. Um, But Stones coming back in has given me a little bit of doubt. Um, And also, the fact that Kyle Walker hasn't really hit good numbers he's done okay seven points against Burnley with the clean sheet seven points against Newcastle with the clean sheet but then three points two points he got five points against uh, West Ham by picking up a bonus and a big chance created and a couple tackles but five points isn't good the Champions League game four points he got nine against Forest when he did get an assist so nine points but that's not massive is it for getting an assist and a clean sheet did not play Newcastle and four points against Wolves, three points against Leipzig. So not hitting double figures at all, even in the games where he's getting like an assist, not in the games where he's getting a clean sheet. So do I just pass on that one? Um, just keep Saliba. Is there going to be that much difference between the two maybe? So I've been put off him a little bit. And then if Stones does come in, it puts a little bit of doubt on whether he'll get two fixtures. So I don't know if it's worth it going for Walker at the minute. The low... Now, Delo's probably got the best attacking threat. If I could do Delo versus Dan Burn, Delo probably got the most attacking threat, the more exciting. 
he sometimes takes corners. Um, two home fixtures as well, which look good. Did hit double figures in that game against Crystal Palace, but it was Crystal Palace's B team in the Carabao Cup. I don't know if you put some thought into that. And then obviously, Man United are crap at the minute. They're really, really bad. They've got lots of injuries, unsettled back line. Onana's not doing very well. It feels like all the form is against that move. And then Casemiro missing that Champions League game through suspension is going to just add another spanner into how defensively reliable they are. So at the minute, I think Dallo feels more like a hope. I'm ho- I'll get him in and I'll be hoping that he does something against the actual what is going on at the time. Or well, Dan Byrne, it feels less exciting, but he's probably got just as much chance of playing twice as Dallo at the minute. So they match up nicely there. Dan Byrne has got two goals so far this season, but I'm not ready to say he's a better attacking option than Dallow. I think Dallow's a better attacking option than Dan Byrne. Um, but Dan Byrne is a big old lad, and Trippier does put balls on his head. So that does have him with a bit of aerial threat, a bit of attacking threat, and he's done it so far this season. But the thing about Dan Byrne is he's going to play twice a week and Newcastle are actually looking like a functioning defence. They are looking like they could get two clean sheets and they've got two home fixtures, uh, Crystal Palace and Borussia Dortmund. And I think that he probably is going to be a better pick than Delo. Um Might be controversial. Let me know if you think Dan Byrne or Delo are better picks maybe for this double game week nine. But I like Delo at the minute. So I'm looking at doing Johnston in for Sanchez, Dan Byrne in for Stupinian, keeping Saliba, Cash and Trippier, Bruno Fernandes, I'm going to hold Gordon through his suspension and keep Phil Foden in midfield and then I'm going to keep Alvarez up front, now I potentially could have maybe used Alvarez as some way of getting raising funds for Trent but I just don't want to do it this week, he's at 20 points, um, he could still score against Arsenal and he's probably going to get a price rise. And that's the difference also with Dan Byrne. Dan Byrne should go up in price. I found it hard to predict these at the minute. But Dan Byrne should go up in price. Alvarez should go up in price. If I bring in Dallo, Dallo's probably not going to go up in price. Um, and whoever I brought in elsewhere, Trent isn't guaranteed. So I think this will be the better move for price rises. Better move long term. It doesn't look that exciting when I would do it. Johnston and Dan Byrne don't look like two exciting moves ahead of a uh, ahead of this game week eight, but I think it makes sense. Um, Dan Byrne's getting tackle points as well, um, so I think that he could be a good option. I quite like that Newcastle double up. I don't think that many people are going to be going for the Newcastle double up at this point. So I quite like the look at that. Alvarez, Salah, and Haaland up front, and then. I think I'm going to stick the captaincy on Salah. Um, I think this is going to be a game week of differential captains. People going against Haaland. His form has not been the best for him. And he faces Arsenal away from home. So I think a lot of people will move off Haaland. There's an argument that that makes Haaland a better captaincy pick when he is a bit more differential. But I do think there's a few other good options this month. Uh, Sorry, this game week in Son, Madison, Salah. Could even go Alvarez. Could take a take a punt on Trippier maybe, but I am gonna go for Mohamed Salah. I think he's looked really good, and I think Brighton's defence have looked rubbish. Um, and then obviously that leaves me 0.5 million in the bank. We get to uh, go about our lives without Premier League football in the international break. Then maybe decide what we're gonna do with our teams. Come back with a few injuries to react to. Uh, but it gives me 0.5 million in the bank. So that would then I want Trent. So I'd Obviously, price rises can come into it, but Trent 5.4, Alvarez 4.5, 0.5 in the bank. So, I wouldn't be able to get Alvarez to Trent in one move. I'd have to probably find about 0, between 0.3 and 0.5 from someone else to be able to go Alvarez to Trent. And obviously, I'm not going to want to downgrade Salah. I want him. I'm not going to want to downgrade Haaland. I want him. Bruno Foden. I do really want them for that double game week as well in game week nine. But maybe I lose patience with Bruno. We'll see. Um, But the obvious one that could be available if I do want to downgrade elsewhere is I could actually do Saliba out 
um, to save me that money. If Dallo goes down, I could probably go Alvarez to Trent and Saliba to Dello. Um, then I have got Bern and Dello in that one and no Arsenal coverage. So, yeah, that is my potential options. But at the minute, Dan Byrne in for Estupinian and Johnston in for Sanchez. Let me know how you got on this week in the comments below. Let me know if you think I'm mad with these transfers. If you've got any dilemmas, also pop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you. All the rest for game week eight. And yeah, that is it for this episode. So thanks for watching. Leave a like. Please subscribe to the channel. Check out the Dream Team Tonic podcast. And we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.